the music of the 90s, the sound they tried to silence. The 90s had an inspirational music scene where there was a new way of playing music. New genres were emerging, new cultural ideas were being created, and the music itself became more aggressive towards what they called the oppressors. Kurt Cobain and Tupac Shakur spearheaded a revolution against apathy, crime, corporations, poverty, and censorship of expression. Although some tried to silence and censor the music of the 90s, the seismic effect it created will always reverberate in today's society. Tupac Amaru Shakur rose to fame on the heels of one of the most drastic spikes in the American crime rate in history. In 1990, homicides, the most documented of criminal offenses, reached a starting 9 per 100,000 residents. Growing up in the streets of Baltimore, Tupac will win his first hand to the effects of this crime and poverty on our nation and youth. When Tupac first began to become an artist, he vowed to show the most graphic details of what he saw in his community, in hopes that the government would be forced to put a stop to it. He compared his approach to the effect of televising the brutality of the Vietnam War, and the way in which the media coverage of the war allowed the public to realize how gruesome and pointless the violence was. After releasing his first solo album, Tupacalypse Now, Tupac showed that he can honor his va vow to demonstrate the brutal realities of ghetto with songs like Brenda's Got a Baby. Tupacalypse Now is the story of the young black male from track 1 to track 13, whether it be about teenage pregnancy, police brutality, a battle cry to America. By 1993, Tupac's music had expanded to become its own cause, the one he titled, Thug Life. I mean, it was cool because I got a chance to speak to young black males all over the country about this new idea called Thug Life, which is a new kind of black power. And when I say Thug Life, I mean that shit, because these white folks see us as thug. I don't care what y'all think. I don't care if you think you a lawyer, if you a man, if you an African-American. Through his music, Tupac was able to transcend past any normal activist for nonviolence. His unique form of expression allowed him to connect with the perpetrators of the same crime that his music was actively against. He even went as far as organizing leaders from the large rival gangs, the Crips and Bloods, to sign a code of ethics for the streets called Thug Life. Tupac envisioned an American in which impoverished children in the ghetto can make a rags to riches climb out of poverty and express his view in Chicago, his music. Chicago, wherever. We got all these people all over the country saying, yes, we go by this code. We're going to get against attacks on people that are not involved with the street gang, the drug trade, or the illegal business at all. You know, all that kidnapping, shooting, drive by, the message that's that. coming. All the people you threw away, the dope dealers, the criminals, they will be legit sitting next to you in first class, thanks to your boy. You know those little things they have for the mice where they go through around the circle, little blocks for it and everything? Well, society is like that. They'll let you go as far as you want. But as soon as you start asking too many questions and they're ready to change, boom, they'll block a cup. There is absolutely no reason for a record like this to be published. Sadly, though, not everyone can relate to Tupac's vision of thug life. Those on the outside looking in on his vision, such as political figures and other activists for nonviolence, spoke out against his movement. Never before there has been such a will to use music to advertise self-destructive violence. It glorifies violence. It's creating groups of guns and rape. All of a sudden, I got the whole world feeling. Man, I ain't even started. I haven't even wrote my plan out yet, and they're trying to stop me. I challenge the view that those who revel in violence, depravity on the screen or in the song, bear no responsibility when that spirit spreads out into our At the same time that Tupac's vision of thug life was stirring in America, Kurt Cobain and his group Nirvana used the same controversial attitude to push other envelopes within society. Both Nirvana and Tupac faced substantial opposition from the media, and they were both aware of the other's plight. After this, the whole world will owe me an apology, because I went through this night blowing my brains out like Kurt Cobain, and I shouldn't this is crazy. Crazy, crazy, the 90s were kicked off in 1992 with the release of Nirvana's Nevermind. Although the album did not hit number one on the Billboard charts until 1993, 
It is ranked as the 17th best album in Rolling Stone's top 500 albums of all time. Cobain took up many causes. He was against the corporate takeover from Reaganomics, censorship of expression, and most importantly, the apathy that he saw in his generation. Cobain was most notable for his artistic integrity, or his ability to not sell out to the many corporations that would wish him, for him to endorse them. Cobain used sarcasm to get his point across, attacking other artists' integrities by saying, Hello, we're major label corporate rock sellouts. He also made a joke about how his album should be sold with the McDonald's Happy Meal. Kurt was quoted saying that, To ignore the corporate, corporate ogre is pointless. You should rape them the way that they rape you. He demonstrated it by using corporations to benefit him, and then criticizing and hurting the image of the company that helped him. He did this with his own record company, and also with MTV, writing a letter saying, Dear MTV, MTTV, we will survive without you, easily. He also did this when doing a photo shoot for Rolling Stones magazine. Although the magazine supported his artistic views and helped to boost his image, Kurt wore a corporate magazine's Still Suck t-shirt, which appeared on the front cover. Kurt also fought against the censorship of expression. Being an artist as well as a musician, Cobain designed the album covers from Nirvana. But most of the time, these album covers were seen as obscene. Kurt fought the apathy that he saw in his generation. Kurt saw the 80s as a time where no one other than the neglected underground punk tried to do anything about the changes that they were seeing in their world. Kurt is quoted as saying, My generation's apathy, I'm disgusted with it. I'm disgusted with my own apathy too, for being spineless and not always standing up against racism, sexism, and all those other isms the counterculture has been whining about for years. Comparing the generation that he is a part of to one of that that he had grown up seeing in the 60s and 70s. His most popular song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, was written about apathy. The music video suggests even more, with a group of teenagers listening to the band, changing from sitting peacefully in the stands to charging the floor, creating a revolution. The band itself created an image of being rowdy. One example being that they were kicked out of their own party to celebrate the release of their new album in 1993, Nirvana played a benefit concert for Bosnian rape victims. They helped to bring awareness to the Serbian-Bosnian crisis and also went along with their uh, fight for apathy. The artists of Nirvana understood that they could not give much direct relief to the victims, so they used their music to influence others and encourage aid. The concert demonstrated how Cobain used his music to express his desire for change in society. In 1991, Nirvana released their album Nevermind and featured a naked baby swimming underwater with a dollar bill and a fish hook in front of him. Kurt agreed to only censor the penis if a sticker was placed in front of the red. If you're offended by this, you must be a closet pedophile. Nirvana's third album, In Utero, was banned from Walmart and Kmart due to the song Rape Me and the anatomical pictures on the front and back of the album. Sadly, Kurt died at the age of 27 from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Cobain only started to show how alternative rock could be, make a difference in the world, but opened the door for the youth who cared to listen, and the new bands that followed started to make it happen. The music of the 90s inspired many youth to seek changes in their culture, but it is sad to think that many of the ideas that emerged during the time were left incomplete. Both artists had the potential to fulfill their dreams of making a better world, but both died too young to see or even continue to help with some of the changes that they wished to see. Still, in today's music, there are frequent references from those who feel they embody the same characteristics of each artist. Cobain's back, yeah, Cobain's back. Got these crazy white boys yelling Cobain's back. I call my weed Nirvana, smells like teen spirit. And Tupac back, Tupac back. That's all these bitches screaming at Tupac back. The legacy of Tupac also lives on through the Tupac Shakur Center for the Arts which was started by his mother after his death as a place where archives of his career and other artists could be held. The center also serves as a service to provide teaching of the arts to kids in the surrounding areas of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Sadly, even such a no noble attempt to add uplifting the youth was negatively responded against because of its connection to Tupac. The music of the 90s was itself a revolution. It changed many people's lives and even more people's future, but most importantly, it helped give today's youth a voice a feat that hadn't been accomplished since the musical revolution of the 60s and 70s. As a people, we need another revolution like the 90s. We need to realize that like the musicians of that time, we have the power to change the world. Both artists' lives were untimely cut short, but their messages will always live on through the hearts and minds of whom they affected. When we asked 10 years ago, we was asking with the Panthers, we was asking with that, you know, the Civil Rights Movement, we was asking, you know, now, now those people that were asking, they're all dead and in jail. So now what do you think we're going to do? Ask?